Welcome back, YouTubers. This is Inland Northwest Native News. I'm your host. I'm your co-host, Margo Hill. And my name is Jeff Ferguson. And it is a great day to be indigenous. It's a wonderful time to be here. And it is March Madness all over again. Can't even believe it. Been waiting all year, two years. Been waiting two years for this. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. It's been a really amazing time to watch the Zags. Uh, Kansas is looking really good this year. Uh, Michigan is looking really good. It, uh, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait. And I just had to wear this oh. um, shirt you got me last time you were down there. Yeah, um, I was out at Haskell. Uh, shout out to all those Haskell rascals. Haskell Indian School. And I popped over and got him a Jayhawk shirt. Yeah, it's pretty, and a sweet hat to go. I should have wore the hat. Yeah, there you Maybe, go. Well, it's the beginning of March Madness, so yeah. there's still time. So it is also March Madness in Indian Country. So we're going to be bringing you some stories from Hoops. Hoops are hot, and it's March Madness. All right. So uh, if this is your first time joining us, uh, we'd like to invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, at 8 a.m. We go from 8 to about 8.30 and we cover news and events for 11 tribes of the Inland Northwest, uh, as far west as the Colvilles, down to the uh, Warm Springs, Umatilla, Yakima, over to the Nez Perce, up to the Blacks, the, uh, the Blackfeet over in Montana, and then, uh, of course, up to the Salish Kootenai, the Kootenai of Idaho, the Calus Bells, the Spokane, the Coeur d'Alene, and I think that's all. I think you all. got it. I yeah. think I got them all. I think all. you got it. So, and we cover the news and events on a national, regional, and local level that affect you and stories that are important to you. If you have, and this is one, this is so exciting because we've been asking for uh, stories on uh, and natives going Division One, and there's always natives going Division One in basketball, so that's really cool. Um, we also have some other ones here that, that we're going to get to, but we have a very special guest that's going to be joining us here today. We have an interview with um, uh, just James, J.G. Pakotas, and we're going to get to him here in a little bit after we get through some sports. So be sure to hang tight. Uh, it, again, if you uh, would like to uh, uh, join us every morning, uh, be sure to hit the like button down and, and the subscribe button. And uh, you'll be get notifications of uh, when we have our shows coming up. And well, we also have other content that we post uh, occasionally that, that is in the morning show, but uh, haven't had a lot of time to get around to the editing. But. And we want to cover stories that are interesting to mm -hmm. you. So if you have a story you think we should cover, uh, just message us, Margo Lee Hill, Inland Northwest Native News, Jeff Ferguson. Mm -hmm. We'll get your stories on the air and like and subscribe. But let's get started, Jeff. Yeah, we better get going because we have a lot to cover today. And I think the first one we got here oh it's another one of those shimmel gals holy cow milan shimmel a umatilla has game high seven assists at seven points for the bearcats in a 71 to 58 win over tulsa how exciting is that in tulsa uh let's see uh i'm our thomas scored a game high of 28 points with nine rebounds and three blocks and caitlin wilson added 20 points with the six with six three pointers, the Cincinnati won in its second consecutive game, uh, posting 71 to 58 win at Tulsa on Saturday. With the effort of uh, effort, Thomas moves into the third place on UC's all-time scoring list with uh, 1,853 points behind uh, behind only Cheryl Cook with 2,367 points from way back in 82 to 85. Wow, that's pretty crazy. But uh, just wanted to uh, give a quick shout out to those. Those shimmel gals, man, you guys are making a difference in Indian country. You're 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 inspiring. You're motivating. Um, yeah, and it's just exciting to, to be here. Um, I, I don't. It says the la, the the line on last line on here. Jillian Hayes contributed eight points, eight rebounds, eight assists, and three steals for the Bearcats. Uh, Milan Schimmel added seven points, seven assists, and six rebounds. So getting the boards too, really exciting stuff. So um, we'll yeah. look we'll look forward to watching Milan Schimmel at the Bearcats and helping with that win. That yeah. was all, and we thank the Tulsa for uh, IndianSports.com uh, covering that. Uh, the Tulsa out, out in Tulsa, um, Indian Sports. Thanks for that uh, news article. Yeah, so we have... Next, we go over to high school boys basketball. Western A-Boys, Ronan defeats Butte Central in consolation final. 
Uh, so this is a great story near and dear to my heart. Uh, Butte, after winning their games on Saturday morning, Ronan uh, and Butte Central played in the early evening to decide third place in the Western A Divisional Tournament. The Ronan Chiefs came away with a 54-49 to win. Uh, both teams have already secured spots in the state tournament, so third place or consolation was just uh, played for the seeding purposes. Uh, regardless of future implications, both teams played with high intensity. Um, and this story comes to us again, uh, 406 Montana Sports. Um, and many of these guys, you know, uh, they, they tributed, the, the, they had lost a friend last year, and so they dedicated uh, this game to him. Uh, they said his name in huddles and breaks, and the Ronan coach, DJ Fish, said, when we play some play for something and we have that drive, we have plenty of potential, and uh, we're a dangerous team. Elijah Tenasket, right on Elijah, uh, led the Chiefs with 18 points, while Gurma DeWittler, DeWiler had 12 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks. Uh, yeah, so um, Eva posted uh, this and Marlo Tanaska Jr. and Elijah. This was exciting to, to see this. Uh, these are my great nephews, uh, Elijah and, and Marlo, bro, out there doing it in Montana. So this is really exciting. We'll be looking for Ronan Chiefs. Yeah, we're going to. I'll read this uh, caption that she put on here. Bringing home some hardware. Ronan Chiefs third place uh, finish at Western A Division Tournament. Uh, Beyond proud of my boys in the Chiefs uh, State Tournament this week. Thanks for posting that uh, for us, Eva. That was great to see. Really exciting stuff, and good luck with you, uh, you guys in your tournament. So, moving right along, it's not just uh, boys basketball. It's not just boys basketball. Winnebago, uh, Winnebago girls stun number two Malcolm to reach state for the first time since 1990. And this one coming out of the Lincoln Star. Clark Grell did a real good job at. Uh, of covering this they got some great shots in here um i'm just gonna move along to this next shot here oh yeah check that one out malcolm uh in malcolm uh Tr trayvon bear always has check that had one instruction for his winnebago girls uh basketball team shoot less than 20 threes a game and the wins will follow but this group of players love to shoot the long range. So Bear, about a handful of games ago, had a change of philosophy. I gave them the green light to shoot from there on out, he said. And we've been on a winning streak ever since. So it goes on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he said, maybe I should have done it a little bit earlier. The <laughs> Indians, uh, number 16 seed in Friday's district bound, drained 10 uh, three-pointers to stun number two rated number one seeded Malcolm 51 to 49 in the C1 district final at Malcolm High School. Uh, Winnebago 15-10 is their record, which has won six straight, is headed uh, to its first state tournament since 1990. Um, I'm speechless right now, Bear said, trying to catch my breath honestly. You know, that's understandable considering <laughs> how this one finished. After trailing by seven at halftime, Malcolm, 21-2, came out of the locker room on fire, hitting three three-pointers. That fueled a 15-2 run for the Clippers, who took a 34-28 lead. Uh, but Winnebago fought back to the best way they knew how. They they did the three ball. They did the three ball. Yep, That'll do yep, it, man. Yep. So often it, it, it you know it can still even be a ten point game and it just a couple a couple of um, turnovers and they're right back in it you know it's pretty exciting to see that when you got a team shooting that well from outside that's awesome we're gonna have to watch yeah, that yeah shout out to those Winnebago those Nebraska Winnebagos yeah I keep hitting the threes man <laughs> keep hitting the threes all right so we have uh, Michael Irvine so we're switching it up a little bit here. This is another uh, young native athlete here uh, out of Ronan High School. Michael Irvine, a senior at, high, at Ronan High, has signed a letter of intent to run cross-country for the Montana State University uh, Northern Men's cross-country team beginning fall 2021. Michael was a top 15 runner in Class A, uh, in, in Class a during his senior season and is poised to have a great senior track season too. I'm really excited that Michael has committed to Northern. He spent some time up there with the, the men's team and was a, a really good fit. All the guys want him on the team. I know that, that he has a lot of potential as a runner, 
but I was also impressed with his character and the way he presents himself. I'm really excited uh, about you, young man. That's awesome. Really cool. We raise your hands to you, representing uh, Indian country with pride and dignity and, and great character. So we wish you luck, Michael, and, and good job on, on your letter of intent. So. Yeah, yeah, so the the high school coach there, Riley Dennis, had had this to say. It has been quite the journey coaching Michael. Ever since the, the first middle school practice, he has overcome and grown so much uh, throughout everything. He has persevered and transformed into both a spectacular runner and an outstanding young man. Michael has only scratched the surface of his potential, and I have no doubt that he will continue doing amazing things. So pretty exciting, um, and thanks again to IndianSports.com. Yeah. Yeah, they are, are keeping right up with it, and we really like to see stuff coming out of the Inland Northwest. You know, yeah. we're we're here to help fill that gap that mainstream media uh, for for so long has has just left empty like a black hole, like nothing ever happens out here, and like there's no awesome Indians that that aren't from this area. And I, I <laughs> beg to differ. There's some Clearly. amazing <laughs> amazing people out of here, and and we actually have some amazing coastals too that are, are doing stuff, and we like to highlight them. And and the one for sure that we like to keep up with or try to keep up with, see if we can get this. Okay, uh, we have Rosalie Fish from the Cowlitz named the NJCAA National Indoor Track and Field Athlete of the Week. Um, this is so exciting. Rosalie, who's Cowlitz um, and from Muckleshoot area, had a busy weekend for Iowa Central. This past Friday, Fish comp uh, competed at the Washburn uh, JUCO Challenge and finished runner-up in the in the 800 at, at 220. Oh, geez. Um, that mark currently ranks third among performances from the 2021 season. Uh, two days later, Fish won both the 1,000 and the mile at the Triton Kansas Challenge in uh, three minutes, three seconds, and uh, 5.15, respectively. Fish dominated those races, winning by an average of nine seconds. Wow. Um, this is the second year in a row that multiple female athletes from Iowa Central have been named National Athletes of the Week during the indoor season. Fish joins teammate and two-time honoree Victoria Adu in getting this national recognition. Uh, Fish was also named ICCAC Athlete of the Week. Iowa Central competes this Saturday, uh, Region 11 Championships of its 16th consecutive team title. Again, and Indian Sports, thank you, Indian Sports. Yeah, Rosalie Fish, man. If you don't remember her, we had uh, talked a little bit about uh, one of the workshops that she's going to be doing here. Uh, I think she may have already done it. I, I think it was last week. Um, but uh, anyhow, she was also the one that ran uh, for the Muckleshoot, Muckleshoot Tribal School. Um, was that two seasons ago now? Gosh, it seems like, <laughs> hey, gosh, you know, COVID really messed up so many things. But she was running in her senior year. Uh, for the Muckleshoot Tribal School out at the WIAA uh, track tournament out in Eastern Washington University, and that's when she ran with the red, um, the red hand on her face and the MMIW going down her leg, and then that photo of Alex, that Alex Flett took of her went global. It it took off and it showed up. I think it was five days. It showed up on ESPN's homepage. It showed up on uh, Yahoo Sports Australia's homepage. It showed up all over Indian Country, and she's just been. Blazing trails ever since. Uh, I know she got inundated with a bunch of interviews uh, right after that track meet, um, and maybe it settled down. Maybe we'll maybe we'll try and reach out to her and see if we can get an interview with her again because she gave a great interview. If you'd like to see that, go back to our older episodes. I guess it was about a year. It was. Was it really that long ago? Holy yeah, cow. it was that long ago. But um, yeah, if you just go back into our older episodes, you'll see uh, her name come up in, in the description. So anyhow, shout out again to Rosalie Fish, again, Blazing Trails. And now we move on to... We have some quick facts from the Colvo Indian Reservation. Um, looking at COVID numbers, uh, this is from the Colvo Tribune. Um, active number cases in isolation are 24. Uh, quarantine list 24 and recovered from COVID uh, uh, 363. So uh, in the OMAC district 6, Nispelum 17, Keller 0, Inchilim 1. Uh, so we're working, you know, tribal leaders and health care prof uh, professionals are working to keep those COVID numbers down. Uh, the next story, uh, Jeff, is we have from the Washington State Legislature. 
we're looking at the Native American mascot bill. Uh, points to something that the city of Spokane did well and the Spokane tribe. And this is from Spokesman Review. Uh, just it came out on Saturday. Uh, and uh, this is a story by uh, Jim Candon. Um, although I've never been a big believer in the Cascade Curtain, more than a decade in Olympia has taught me that there's a certain West Side bias that results in a somewhat rare recognition, let alone praise for things Eastern Washington does right. Um, so it was a pleasant surprise when there was debate over a bill to restrict the use of Native American names and images on high school sports and their teams. Uh, thumbs up to uh, Spokane and the Spokane tribe for how it dealt with this thorny national issue. In fact, it's a good example of what has been done in Washington. Uh, you know, uh, said in Spokane, said Representative Deborah Likanoff. Uh, she's, uh, you know, one of our own. She's a, a native indigenous female and she's in the state uh, House of Representatives. Uh, Democrat, uh, again, she's the only Native Americans currently serving in the House. Uh, the Spokane tribe and the community, uh, the Spokane Indians baseball team worked together on a way for the team to honor the tribe and with whom it shares its name, she said. Yeah, go ahead. Well, <laughs> a mouthful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yep. This is really an exciting story. The Spokane team with their Salish logo is the only one in the country with uniforms that carry a Native American language, said Likanoff, uh, the prime sponsor of the bill. So unique, so unique is that uh, that uniform that one hangs in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, said uh, Senator Andy Billig, a Spokane Democrat who uh, was president of the team, president of the team when those discussions took place back in 06. So he was part of that. And in my professional career, it's one of the most meaningful things I've been a part of, he said recently, which is really exciting. That's a neat thing. Um, how cool is that logo? As a, as a senator, Bill followed the tradition of giving gifts to his colleagues when he passed uh, his first bill. Uh, included in the gift bag were Spokane Indians baseball hats, some with uh, logos in English and some with logos in the tribe Salish language. The Salish logos were so popular that some senators asked if they could <laughs> swap out the English ones. That was really, that's pretty exciting. Um, really groundbreaking stuff. Or what they say on the res, it's cutting edge. Hey. So the, the, uh, in the Salish language, Spokane, which is, uh, Spokane is the traditional uh, enunciation of our word. Uh, Spokane um, and that of course is our Salish dialect with the Salish font so it's so cool um, that our lo local team honors the tribe and asks the tribe how they'd like to be represented so there was a lot of work that went into uh, the selection of the fonts and letters and all that kind of stuff so that's really exciting to see yeah and uh, that that photo I just shared with you was actually from the Baseball Hall of Fame so it's pretty exciting that we have a jersey down there so yeah I don't know if we can say the Spokane Indians have been inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame. And we say Spokane Squaluch. Uh, Spokane Indians, that's the, you know, our Squaluch is, oh, yeah. is, is, is the word for Indian. So. I, I thought there was a war hoop in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a little war yeah, I'll scare my, I don't want to scare you guys with my war hoops. Uh, it's a little early Monday morning. Give me another shot of coffee and they'll start flying. All right. But I think we're ready to call our guests. We are. Should and and the and reason, it? we're, we're going to give this a shot. We haven't done this yet, but we're trying to do a live interview with uh, James. Uh, just James, uh, as he goes oh, by, or J.G. Pacotis. I don't know if I can That's do That's okay. It. Well, i got some slides here I could show if you can try it and, and get them up. I have to download the app. Oh, no. You, did you go into... Oh, you should be able to just go into Facebook. That's what I huh? was in Facebook, so... Oh, well, I'll see if I can get him because I know he's been wanting to. And if I can get him... Oh, it's trying to download. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's Is it gone? I do. I'm trying to get him... So these guys put together a uh, short film, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. See if I can get him up here. Yeah, it's wanting me to download something for the Mac. Sorry about that. Oh, you know what? We're going to have to figure this out. I'm going to show some of these slides, and uh, we'll try to get him in here on Wednesday. Uh, we're having a little technical difficulties here. Um, it's asking to upgrade. It's asking to do a couple different things. Um, but we'll see if we can. Gosh, I'd love to have him on here. And I don't think. You can call him on yours. Um, I could try. 
I'm going to try, but this is the film that we're talking about here. It's called, well, it's, uh, this is actually why we're talking about it. It's called Sister Wolves, and it was uh, recently officially selected into the Maori Land uh, Film Festival, which is down in um, New Zealand. And so that's really exciting. He had a bunch of his friends um, and colleagues that, <coughs> that helped out with this. And uh, I'm going to try to see if I can get this to cooperate on another level. So It's, it's looking, maybe. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Very good, maybe. Let's see. Well, here you are. How do I so, start the game? Hey, there he is. Cool. I am. Let's see if we can get. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're kind of sideways, though. Do you want me to put back up north? Oh, yeah. It'll be vertical. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. And see how do if we I make can, them big? We'll just hit this one over here and we'll make them bigger. Look, yeah, there Jay, you are. Oh! Come on to us live. Where are you at, JG? I am in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow. <laughs> what are you doing there, man? Uh, I just got here like seven days ago. It was kind of a wild trek here. Um, but. You know, I was uh, I applied for a program called Tulsa Remote, um, where uh, the kind of the basis of the program is, uh, you know, working from home, and sorry, somebody's trying to call, um, working from home, and then a majority of your work coming from out of state or, or or out of the city that you come from. So I thought it was perfect for me, and you know, they 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 allowed me to come here to Tulsa. Okay. Uh, it's a business fellowship, you know, different than any other fellowship I've received before. Um, so uh, I'll be here. Uh, it's a 12-month program, and you know, I started doing some research on the program, and I get like a year access to a place in Spokane, like Terrain. Uh, it's a co-working space, uh, so I'll get access to be able to network with other entrepreneurs. And then so I started doing research on, on the place called 36 Degrees North and like a lot of the places or the businesses that are there are like startup incubators and marketing execs and fundraising, uh, you know, uh, specialists. So I hope, uh, you know, this year that I'm here, I don't know how long it's going to be. We may end up staying because we love it. I'm not sure. Um, I just kind of I'm guided by creators, so you know I don't I don't ever like oh this is where I'm going to be this is my plan to stay like resolute and whatever it is I just kind of you know put the work in put the passion in and let creator guide the steps you know and, and don't worry about the destination you know enjoy the journey you know in the process so um, I'm hoping to learn new business models here learn new ways to market and, uh, and and just gain that visibility that that I hope that I've been hoping to build for you know uh, a couple years now so it's exciting to see things take off and I'm so wow. appreciative. Wow <laughs> that's so exciting wow uh, uh, JG here I thought you were like in Nespelum or OMAC or something and you're coming to us from Tulsa that is so exciting yeah, no. and a business fellowship that is really cool how long did you yeah, say no. you're gonna be there for 12. Uh, 12 it's a 12 month program so 12 months at least um, you know my partner uh, she's Cherokee woman um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of her spiritual connectivity here um, so she's got a pretty deep network and uh, you know I'm not I, the Northwest will always be home you know it's like this is that's that's where my heart and my and my soul are um, but you know, I feel like, I don't know, like ever since I was a little kid, I've always had this weird belief. Uh, I don't know, it's not weird, but uh, it's a belief that I'm destined for greatness. And I don't know like what that's going to lead or where that's going to lead me, but um, I feel like I'm trying to I'm trying to reach this national and world spotlight. You know, I've got, I just want to tell stories and, 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 the world's, and the world's answering. So, you know, I'm just going to follow that lead and no longer... Uh, you know, self sabotage or not believe in myself anymore, and I'm gonna go and reach for the stars. You know, man, you've been you've been doing some amazing things. I'm just so happy for you. You know, you you Thank went you. and did a, a NAMI thing, and you know, you've been yeah. collaborating with like everybody under the sun. Um, yeah. It's been exciting to watch you. You're really inspiring, and I I hope the best for you, man. I can you talk a little bit about Maori land for us and, and what that, what yeah. your involvement was and what that means to you? It's, uh, 
Man, we just we just found out uh, we were we were official selections for Maori Land uh, Film Festival, um, like maybe four or five nights ago. Um, I am a producer on uh, uh, an animated short called Sister Wolves, directed by Ben Alex Dupree. Uh, you know, I was like, I don't know, I'd like to say maybe six or seven months ago, Ben Alex reached out to me. He goes, you know, you. I've been watching you. You won the Native American Music Award in 2019. I've got this piece, you know, and it, and it was it was at first scored by by the team that animated it, Half an Orange, um, and it had this like lo-fi kind of hip hop beat behind it. And Ben Alex was actually the one narrating. Um, and he goes, you know, it's a powerful piece. It's one of our book of legends, you know, from the from the Caldwell stories, <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, um, how the sister will straighten her hair. I believe is the title of the story in the in the book of legends, but um, you know that the animation team brought that story to life, so it's one of our own, it's one of our own Colville stories, you know, narrated by by one of our own Colville members. But at the same time, Ben Alex was like, you know, I feel like it could grow even more, and you know, the work you've been doing, like music wise, I want to see if you'd score this piece or try to bring like breathe some new life into this. And I was like, yeah, sure, thank you for the opportunity. So, you know, there was a there was an artist that we were working with called Two Shields Hale. Um, he's uh, uh, three nations, three affiliated tribes uh, from North Dakota, uh, but he has this, 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 he's a folk artist, right? So that's another crazy thing about our collective is which is very eclectic, right? He's a folk artist, and he's got this like Johnny Cash style, very deep, low, resonating voice. And I was like, Ben Alex, I think we got the voice for the narrator, you know? So we went with him, and he did amazing. And then went and sought out Dan Denampkin, one of our own, you know, tribal leaders and culture bearers, and he came and played some native flute. And then, like, our, our collective, I got the shirt on right here, DCM Collective, is kind of based, like, we're all artists and producers and musicians and instrumentalists. So actually four of us in the collective touched that score and, like, brought that brought that score to life. And then, and then T.S., uh, the solution, our, my business partner in New Age, that's gone around to all the schools with me and stuff that a lot of people have, have known on the reservations came to the Spokane Rams with me. Um, you know, he was the supervisor in all of it and brought all those different pieces together and scored it. So, uh, you know, Ben Alex instantly called me back after it was done and was like, you know, this is this is powerful. Like, let's start a film company. I think I think we've got something here. I was like, what? You want to start a film company? Like, heck yeah, I'm down. You know. <laughs> And uh, and and then we we got selected at American Indian Film Fest right off the bat, like two weeks after we finished it, and then bam, LA Skins, and then one LA Skins achievement in animation, and then three or four weeks ago we just got we just got word that uh, you know we're we're going to be in Maori Land, and they they sent us the letter saying they're going to have an enthusiastic crowd. It'll be a full packed. You know, theater, which we haven't known, nobody here has been able to to experience, you know, because of COVID. So it'll be like the the, the kind of like the foreshadowing of, of of what's to come and what could be if we stick with it and stick together and keep telling these powerful stories. But to to go international, um, um, to be you know to be recognized by the Maori people in our tour Aurora, and uh, and and and. For other, you know, for other tribes, you know, that are that are indigenous peoples, uh, recognizing our work all the way up here in the Northwest is so meaningful. Um, wow! I never thought it would be so possible so quickly. You know, I I figured I had to work for years and years and years to reach that. And, uh, <laughs> and well, I'm just hey James, when, when you get ready to go, um, if you need some assistance. You know, uh, Jeff and I'd be happy to uh, carry your luggage or <laughs> I wish you represent. Marks, you know? they're, not, they're not gonna let us in, you know. <laughs> like they're not letting Americans in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, ouch. Yeah, bro, ouch. come on. Yeah. Oh. It's, 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 yeah, it's like March twentieth through twenty fourth, so it's only a few weeks away and you know, oh. we're we're still <laughs> way behind in COVID response. So 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 you know I got a bone to pick with you, right? <laughs> I got. Yeah. I submitted to that that when I was like, "Darn that JG! They got in." <laughs> I got my rejection letter, and you're posting woohoo. Oh, I was man. like, "Oh, well, man. but now I don't feel so bad." <laughs> hey, no, I'm just kidding. I'm I was so happy for you guys. I saw that film festival. I was like, "Man, that is so cool!" If we could get some representation, and I saw you know, and I saw you and Ben Alex. You guys got uh, into the LA Skins Fest. You got into the AIFF. 
you guys are just doing yeah. amazing things and i i hope you guys keep working together and i hope that oh, yeah. you guys can can do some stuff you know um uh ben alex and i are on the uh one heart uh film festival board and mm -hmm. i just it's just, so that's two of us that got selected i actually got an award on mine for out of new jersey at the that's so i was just going to congratulate you oh, on, uh, on your award I appreciate uh, New Jersey that. Film Festival. Congrats, man. That's beautiful. How how cool is that that we all were able to do stuff this year and, and got some recognition for our work and you know, going into this last year it was kinda rough, you know. We're like my uh, so many of my projects got cancelled and it's like I guess it's time to submit or something. I don't know, but it, it's really cool. I was, you know. Yeah, it was you know, I, I you if you would have asked me uh, before COVID if I would have gotten into film it would have been a hard no. Like I was really set on motivational speaking and, and, and like increasing my performing art career and really trying to grow the music aspect. Mm -hmm. And as soon as COVID hit, you know, I called TS up and I was like, man, like we're not going to have access to videographers or cinematographers. Like how are we still going to remain present and relevant as artists? You know, yeah. Um, let's start getting our own gear and let's just start, you know, getting hours behind the camera. Let's create our own work. You know, let's, we we gotta we gotta figure out how to adapt and it morphed into this whole new thing that is just blowing me away. I can't you know I can't explain it or I'm just I'm just grateful you know thankful. Well, that's kind of, you know kind of our motivation uh, going into a uh, morning show to do this was because yeah. of COVID and I couldn't go out and shoot the same things I was doing and we built this studio here which you're welcome to use whenever you're around, whenever you're in town, you need something, let's let us know. You're welcome to come by. And oh, yeah. appreciate you. Not, not, yeah, not it's a problem. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm watching some of these episodes, and I'm like, look at these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? It's inspiring. It's inspiring. So thank you guys for, you know, reaching for your own dreams and, yeah. and adapting in your own way. That's it. That's what our people need to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. that regardless of what can hit, it can be a global pandemic and we can still rise. We're still resilient. So wow. thank hats off to you guys for everything you're doing. Yep. Yeah. We're going to tell our stories. Uh, same with you, brother, out there in Maori land. You're going to be telling the story. Well, thank yeah. you for joining us. This is so exciting. I didn't know you were coming from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. There you go. Very cool. It's so good to see you. We're so proud of you. Um, we're excited for, you know, all your people back on the Cobble Indian Reservation to see what you're doing. We wish you well, brother. We're so proud of you. Yeah. Is there, you um, so what's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, so stay tuned. I know you guys are huge supporters of Tony, Tony Joe Louie. You guys have been since the beginning. And uh, when we were at the residency here in January, he came to me with this spoken word piece. And I had the film equipment, so I filmed him doing this spoken word piece, and we're putting it in the film circuit. Um, <clears throat> we just applied for uh, Black Star Film Festival in Philadelphia, and it's a really powerful piece. Tony did an amazing performance. So you're going to see a lot more collaborations for us in the future, and this year you're going to see Tony reach some new heights. You know, we're, we're putting our eggs in the basket behind him. You know, he's, he's always, you know, reached above and beyond for our crew, and now it's our turn to, to kind of get behind him and, and showcase his talent you know Excellent. so I think we, that's we'd love, is really we'd love to get stories yeah we'd love to get him if we could just whenever he gets a okay. chance you know and we want to okay. see we want when can we see some of this work when can we see the uh the uh, uh film that you guys did and when can we see this one on tony or where is do you guys have platforms yet or, or um, no, well, I mean it's still it's still in the film festival circuit and there's you know some of those film festivals want that to be exclusive Mm -hmm. For so this first year, it's going to be real humbling yeah. to 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 try to reach all these different film festivals. And sometimes, if we release in public, then we're it'll take us out of those film festival runs. So we want to we want to reach a different type of visibility with these pieces, mm -hmm. and then it'll be out for public. But um, you guys are the inside scoop, so I can well, definitely yeah. at least give you a sneak peek. You know, well, yeah. we look Especially forward to it. Makers. Yeah, we support you. We look forward to it. And gosh, man, we're just so inspired by your work, and uh, we're just excited to have you on our show. And, and thanks for joining us. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, have man, you have to keep us up to date. We <laughs> okay. got, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see Let's your smiling your face, man. You always make me smile. <laughs> I you always make me smile. So. Same with you. It's uh, both of you guys. When you speak, it, it 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 brings peace to my heart because you know you guys speak a lot of truth and wisdom out into the world. So thank you for for creating this platform. 
And and uh, JG, I think of the first time down downtown at the the Davenport. I think it was a conference yes. we had down there. Um, we yep. were working on drug and alcohol prevention oh, yeah. for AT and I, and yeah. uh, J JG drove in um, and visited with our folks and. Gosh, I think I had a little bit of gas money. You know, we're just yeah, kids from yeah. the res, right? And I'm right? like, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is before I even had a platform, before I had a voice. So, like, Margo, you were instrumental in, like, allowing me the time and space to grow as a speaker. I didn't – nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew that I had a story. Um, but I was just searching for a way to speak and, and get that out. So I want to thank you for being one of those first people that believed in me and gave me that platform to, to, to believe in myself, really. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, I'm humbled and grateful trying to trying to keep my composure <laughs> for those kind of moments. But well, thank you. you're amazing. And sometime I'll be calling you for gas money. Maybe <laughs> yeah. if I'm in Oklahoma, yeah. if I'm stuck Maybe somewhere. In hey, bro, Tulsa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come through. We'll have a oh, place Walmart. to stay. Walmart. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Funny. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I, I'm just touched and I'm just so happy to see you. I love technology that we can do this. So thank you, bro. Yeah. Appreciate the connection. Yeah, man. Listen, Take care of yourself down there. I heard about yeah, those Tulsa women. All right, JG. Okay. Thank you so much we'll for see joining you later, us. Man. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, again, wow. it is uh, the Maori, Ma, the Maori Land uh, Film Festival. The name is uh, Sister Wolves, and they are just doing amazing things. Um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. I'm glad we were able to get that. You know, first for a, a lot of things, we um, were that was our first live interview, mm -hmm. which went well, and that was really exciting. It was great to hear all the oh things. Oh my gosh! Who knew he was in Tulsa? <laughs> I we thought we were calling to spiel him. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, oh, he's probably Keller. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's about what we have. That's what we have for today. Yeah. We... I, I want to give a couple shout outs. I want to say happy birthday to my niece, uh, Jada Orr, um, just an all star basketball player. It was amazing. I want to say happy birthday to Mariah Sherwood. Uh, shout out to her. And lastly, uh, one of our former uh, students and a grad student, Shoshone Bannock, Sherwin Racehorse, giving a shout Shout out to Sherwin. He's kind of ornery, but he gets it done. Um, and we appreciate folks that get it done. So, all right. all right. Shout out to Sherwin Racehorse. All right. And we will see you back here on Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. 8 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you have story ideas, uh, please uh, send it to us, message us, and, and we'll try to get it in on the air. So, thanks again. Nemeth um, Weechtemin, until we see you again. All right. All right. Oh, I didn't have the end.